So I'm a sociologist, but I'm also a fan. I'm a reality TV fan, unabashedly. Um, I know you say you're a fan in kind of this confessional way, but I think it's okay to say loud and proud yeah, that we are right, reality right. TV fans, <laughs> right? Um, but I, so I'm a sociologist, but I'm also a fan. So I, I sort of wanted this book to serve dual purposes. So on one level, I'm explaining what reality TV can teach us about ourselves, applying a sociological lens to it. But I also kind of wanted to sort of introduce people to sociology at the same time. And so the book kind of goes into kind of the major kind of subject areas of sociology, sociology of the family, sociology of childhood, gender, race, class, um, these kind of large kind of subdisciplinary areas of sociology, um, well, hopefully not being too academic, right? Hopefully still being kind of a fun book that people can pick up, even if they're not interested in learning about the subdisciplines of sociology. Um, but yes, I agree it does get darker. I sort of start off talking about sort of smallest social unit, which is the individual, and what can reality TV teach us about ourselves as individuals? right? Like Countess Luann. She's an individual. The other cast members, mainly Bethany, right? You know, always yes. accuse her of being unreal, right? That she's just performing. But I sort of point out that we're all like Countess Luann. We're all kind of performing on the different stages of our lives. The difference with reality show stars is that they're just doing it in this more kind of heightened public way. But we're all performing every day and we're giving uneven and different performances depending upon the people to whom we're performing. Um, so I started that kind of smallest level and then kind of broaden out what does it teach us about kind of small groups? What does it teach us about families? And then when we get into the kind of large scale social inequalities, what, it, what can it teach us about class, race, gender, sexuality, and how those things are intertwined? Yes, then I think it does get at its darkest. Um, but hopefully in the conclusion, I bring it around again and say like, yes, reality TV can show us some really ugly, grotesque things about ourselves, but it also shows us beauty if, if we kind of know where to look. So let's start, I guess, with some of those smaller groups in terms of uh, couples and and what reality TV reinforces and says about um, relationships, um, because What's interesting about reality TV, and you write this too, I'm paraphrasing, is that it it kind of, it, even though it seems maybe to like uh, a Republican politician uh, hedonistic and um, n not uh, close to God or something, it actually reinforces very conservative social conditioning, particularly in like the heteronormative way that The Bachelor, which is the number one reality dating TV show does, um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, not close to God. I mean, it's really interesting. Actually, a former reality star just emailed me today and said, you're doing the Lord's work. And I was like, I don't know about that. Like, I just wrote a <laughs> sociological book about reality TV. But yeah, it's so paradoxical, right? Because you would expect that these shows, right, are they're filled with what we would call deviants in sociology. So people who are behaving in ways that are outside the norm. So it's like zany people in outrageous situations. But at the end of the day, reality TV really kind of confirms for us some of our kind of most conservative social ideals. And by conservative, I don't necessarily mean politically conservative, although sometimes those ideals align. Oftentimes those ideals align with kind of conservative ideology. But they show us how we think in really narrow ways about what we consider to be kind of legitimate and real and normal and healthy and how we're kind of unyielding in how we think about those things. So everything from how we think about how a woman should act, right? Or how, you know, a person of color should act to, you know, what pants are the appropriate pants to buy. Reality TV for all of its zaniness kind of shows us again, the kind of narrow categories and roles and expectations that we have and that, that kind of still persist. Right. I mean, I, I'm I'm reminded and we can get into the racial component, too. But in terms of like how specific people can act in The Bachelorette, the first Bachelorette uh, of color was Rachel Lindsay. And I've heard her talk about and she's a really smart person um, and definitely my favorite of the leads on that show. She's talked about how um, to succeed and to be considered for that lead role in that position she had to never present herself as angry because she was black uh be exceptional because she's a lawyer have all of these degrees show off show herself in that certain light um 
And outside of the perception, that depiction of black people on that very popular show, the, the, the black people are not portrayed. <laughs> you're either exceptional right. or you're outside of the conversation. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's become kind of a, and yes, the bachelor franchise has again, made efforts at diversity in recent years. Um, you know, a lot of people would say kind of and they too lost little, a bunch too of late. Viewers. They and lost they lost a bunch, a bunch of, viewers. of viewers, which says mm -hmm. something about, you know, uh, American culture as well, um, that people maybe don't want to tune in. And by people, I mean white people um, don't want to, maybe don't want to, are less or kind of more reticent to tune in to see um, a person of color in a protagonist role. But prior to that, right, it really was this show where, you know, middle class, white, conventionally hot, heterosexual people linked up with each other, right? And there were people of color on there, um, but they were sort of never seen to be, shown to be kind of in serious roles. They never, whatever, they were seldom shown to be kind of serious contenders for kind of that final slot, right? Um, and, you know, I say in the book that, you know, aside from the, the kind of moral question or what of what the shows or the producers have the kind of moral imperative to do, which I think is a different question. Um, these shows, you know, teach us, though, how racially stratified we still are as a society, because a majority of people still do end up dating and marrying people who are homophilous to them, who are like them in demographic ways, who are of their same race, who are of their same socioeconomic class. So in that way, you know, The Bachelor may seem absurd to us, but it's, it is kind of a funhouse mirror of these trends um, that are actually happening in our broader culture. Right. I, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm um, going on a bit of a tangent here, but I, I've thought about this a little bit in terms of like American Idol in the early 2000s. And, and there were so many parts about the way that show was produced that said so much about where we were at, like post 9-11. There was a lot of a lot of patriotism, um, a lot of producer manipulation where like, you know, they would bring out somebody terrible at singing. You're there to mock it, mock them. And then a beautiful story of somebody that, you know, lived, uh, worked really hard and, and pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. And here they are. And, you know, Carrie Underwood wins it all. Mm -hmm. Like th it really was I, that show, honestly, more than and maybe it's just because I'm looking at it because uh, it was in the past. Those the 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 purity of that show in terms of uh, how people did not were not familiar with the reality TV trappings at that per on uh, during that period, and they just reinforced so many of the, uh, the so much of 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 what the the U.S. was going through at that time, flag waving and um, uh, also like these uh, heteronormative and and pro white kind of uh, trends that I, I that show even more than others I feel like says you can you can take a snapshot of that and look at like this is what America was like in 2005. Oh absolutely but in some ways it's still what America's like right? right we're still right with flag waving and we're still performing gender and we're still heteronormative um, and we're still like you know clutching that conservatism so yeah but but even more so at the time absolutely.